Another arrest this week in Macomb County government. The feds clearly have their jaws set on Macomb corruption. There's no telling how far this could go, but we understand there are a lot of nervous folks in the county offices just now. Macomb finds itself in a lot of conversations beyond arrests and indictments. Macomb voters are credited with being the big difference for Donald Trump in Michigan, where the margin was razor thin. But there is some bitterness among their metro area cousins over the fact that it was Macomb voters who put the stake in the heart of the Regional Transit Authority, the RTA. And a nasty snit is broken out between Warren Mayor Jim Fouts and the county executive over some cryptic references to some kind of environmental situation. What is that all about? We'll get caught up on all of it with the county executive Mark Hackle. He's up first this morning on Flashpoint. Well, the folks in Macomb County have gotten used to their politics getting national attention. It's really the cradle of the term Reagan Democrat. But the focus on Macomb politics right now has been particularly intense coming out of this last election. Let's talk about that and more with the Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle. Mark, thanks for being back on Flashpoint this thanks, morning. Let's start with what's going on between you and the mayor of Warren right now. Uh, this past week on Thursday, he got on social media and started talking about something kind of a specter, environmental specter looming out there made a loose comparison to what happened in Flint and then walked it back a little bit. But can you, this apparently has something to do with Freedom Hill, but yeah. explain what, what's going on here. Yeah, and I don't think it's between myself and the mayor. I had to step in and the reason for it was because of that crypt cryptic, I guess, if you will, Facebook comment that he put out there and kind of alluded to, you know, a mini version of Flint. You don't do that. I mean, first and foremost, no public official should use Flint as some kind of, I guess, way of drawing attention to something just to draw attention to themselves. So by doing that, we were really concerned. And what happened was a lot of the residents, whether it was in Sterling Heights or throughout the county, were worried about our drinking water because of the way the letter was written. I immediately called him at six o'clock in the morning and said, you know, uh, what is going on here? You know, I don't like where this is going and uh, we need to have a conversation. Never called back. So media was all over it. Our residents were calling. Mm -hmm. So I had to step in and have a press conference because the media couldn't get to him to find out what he was talking about and say, first off, let's hold off. There is no issue dealing with the drinking water because we had all the experts that understood drinking water. Even his own Department of Public Works, his water department said we were blindsided by this. So in doing so, it created a controversy between he and I. And and so with that being said, I think what he's referring to is some issues at Freedom Hill that we've been working on uh, with, with landfill issues in the city of Sterling Heights. So I, yeah. I don't know if he's going after the city of Sterling Heights because he's upset about something, uh, but I stepped in because of the major concern about environmental issues. It's just not a reality. As I was going to say, to Absolutely finish this not. off, you don't believe there's anything looming it's, out it's, there that's troubling. It's, it's not that I don't believe it. It's the it's experts not, that are okay. engaged in the various issues in the county. Uh, that one certainly isn't one where people are saying, okay, there's, a, there's an environmental concern in the city of Sterling Heights. That's not the issue. Let's move on to uh, this corruption uh, case that we're, we've been watching unfold as the feds have now made three very high profile arrests of, uh, 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 of, of elected officials. Um, but the sense among almost everybody I talked to is that this is just the start, that there's more. What do you think is going on? Yeah, and I hear the same. Uh, you've got a lot of public officials that are a little nervous, a little apprehensive and uh, concerned because they're seeing what's happening. A lot of these contracts that they get involved in, uh, you know, the question becomes, are they, you know, are they taking money uh, to help an election campaign, you know, as a, as a campaign donation? Or are they taking money because it's some type of a bribe to get something uh, done? And uh, unfortunately, that's what's been happening with some of these public officials and some of these municipalities. And I know they keep saying Macomb County and uh, Macomb County government, but it's a uh, municipal uh, personality yes, these, so these far. Are, yes, yes. Nobody in Macomb County government has been brought in as a result of this. Yet um, there's talk about that being a possibility as well. Maybe not connected to this Rizzo issue, but other issues that the are trash collection out. issue. Yeah. Have, have you been uh, have you been talked to by the feds? Have you been deposed? Have you been interviewed? Well, full disclosure, it's not so much that I've been interviewed, but uh, there have been people that have been talking to me. And my background in law enforcement, uh, I'm one of those. Uh, no longer do I have the ability to investigate, but I've been one that has uh, directed individuals that felt like they have been uh, wronged. Uh, by you know certain public officials uh, mm -hmm. because of contracts or whatnot, and have uh, planned told them that you need to go talk to somebody that's a uh, uh, that's a government official that understands law enforcement, and uh, you need to share information and not be afraid of the retaliation or retribution. That's what most of them are worried about. They'll come forward, but they're afraid that nobody's going to do something about it, and now they're exposed, and it's going to mean something with their livelihood. Well, seeing what's happening right now is cause for more contractors, developers, and people that maybe feel like they're being bullied by a public official to come forward and say. I think somebody's going to actually do something about this now. Well, if you're the one that people are bringing their complaints to, you've probably got a pretty good sense of how big this is. Does this, have we just seen the tip of the iceberg? Or, I mean, I guess I'm, 
How big is the corruption problem in these municipalities in Macomb County? Interesting enough, the Rizzo thing wasn't even something that was on my radar. I heard nothing about that until it started. <laughs> we haven't even gotten out. to the things that they've brought you yet. In, in conversations that I've had, it's been uh, much more, I guess, uh, connected with, you know, I guess some of the permits uh, that people are going to be getting and pay to play concerns. And so, with that being said, that information has been passed along. And so, do I think there are some investigative agencies that are very interested in this and working through it uh, with those that are complaints? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very certain that uh, they're very interested in trying to figure out uh, did some public official do something that they should not have done uh, because of you know their position in, in a public office. How would you characterize then the, the, the climate, the political and business climate in these municipalities being investigated? Yeah, there's a lot of nervous uh, public officials and uh, trying to wait and see you know what might be. Do you coming sense though that the, do you sense them as being corrupt places? Uh, you know what, I, I I don't think the places, but I think there's certain individuals that uh, that are they've been acting in that fashion. Uh, not only from what I've heard, but some of the things that I've witnessed and saw myself, um, albeit uh, you know I can't complain on behalf of someone, uh, that individual has to come forward. So people sometimes wonder, you know what, if you're really going to be part of the solution as a public official, you can't just sit and watch those type of things happen. I don't have that luxury. No. 30 years in law enforcement, if I was just sit back and not give somebody direction as to where to go and how to handle these things, then you know what, I'm as much a part of the problem uh, as the individual that's creating this problem. So public officials need to be part of the solution and working with others and saying, hey, it's wrong. If that's happening, you need to step up and you need to come forward and uh, direct them to the resources that are necessary that, that something can get done. Let's move to what happened uh, in this last election in Macomb County. Uh, you're a Democrat. Uh, you watched, uh, I, I think some people argue that in a state where maybe the margin was 12 to 13,000 votes uh, between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, that the overwhelming win that he had in Macomb County was the difference maker. Uh, characterize what you think we saw in Macomb County. It's interesting because I listen to polling and people talking about mm -hmm. polls whether it's uh, local or national, and as I listen to it, I, I find that interesting because I don't know if they're just calling somebody and getting a reaction to see what they're going to say, but I'm out on the streets. I'm engaging. I'm throughout the entire county, and I listen to people in their conversations and talking to them. I don't talk to them or try to convince them what to do, but as that conversation goes on, I kept listening, and I, I was very convinced that, uh, that Donald Trump was going to win Macomb County, and I say that because... First and foremost, signs don't win elections, but I'm going to tell you, I have never seen as many presidential signs for a candidate in Macomb County uh, than the ones we just saw for Donald Trump. It was amazing. And the conversations with your regular, I guess, if you will, working class people that were talking about, we need change. It's not so much that they liked Donald Trump, but they were just tired of what's going on and they wanted to give the politics back to the people. Well, That's it's interesting true. because um, Macomb County went for Barack Obama twice. Yes. Um, a lot of other counties did, and those counties went continued then to support Hillary Clinton and Macomb County changed its its mind I guess you'd say in a big way yeah what's happening in Macomb County that isn't happening somewhere else you know I really don't know I mean I'm fortunate because I'm on the receiving end of the opposite of that in other words uh, even during the gubernatorial races uh, when uh, Governor Snyder was running uh, he won Macomb County overhandedly yeah, uh, yeah. overwhelmingly 60 percent of the vote right, right yet I was running on a ticket as a Democrat uh, right. as a county executive and I won by 70 percent of the vote so people don't understand it but what I tell them is you know what there's the you're gonna have the you're gonna have the strong Republicans and the strong Democrats that are always going to vote Democrat or Republican but there's a lot of independent both and some that will cross over depending upon the candidate or the issue uh, mm -hmm. that they're being faced with so you can't take Macomb County voters for granted absolutely not and you also told MSNBC this week you don't expect that they have a ton of patience necessarily for Donald Trump he better deliver pretty quickly or they won't be there for him next time either absolutely what they look for is they look for that change and if you're coming in they expect to see something happening and if you're not going to deliver on that um, you Again, I don't know if it's a specific promise they're looking for, but they're just looking for change. And I got to tell you, I think the bigger concern they're looking at right now is this willingness to work together rather than coming in and saying, you know what, now uh, the pendulum swung towards the liberal side no. or it's swinging towards the conservative side. They really don't want to hear it anymore, people saying we're going to work together. They want to see it in action. And I, 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 I'm only hopeful that you're going to see at least some of that, whether it's out of uh, you know, uh, uh, Donald Trump's administration or in Macomb County, I'm going to tell you, it's going to swing back. As I mentioned off the top of the program, there's a little bit of resentment in some of the other part, pockets of the metro area for Macomb County in that the people see it as being uh, what killed the RTA. Now, now you and Brooks Patterson both decided that you were going to sort of be agnostic through the campaign on this, um, but clearly it did not register there uh, in a way that was and I guess I'm asking the same question I asked early. Yes. What's going on in Macomb County that was different than the way the story was being told in the rest of the 
metro area. Interesting enough, when you talk about the RTA, first and foremost, there isn't anyone that I've talked to that has said we disagree with regional transit. And uh, in fact, in Macomb County, the smart system, there isn't an opt-out community in Macomb County. We not only supported it, we supported the actual enhancement, meaning when they came back for millage and an increase in millage, we supported it. What they want to look at, no different than what they did with Proposal 1. In other words, nobody disagreed that we needed our roads fixed and our bridges fixed. They didn't like the proposal. They saw through it and they realized, wait a minute, this isn't what we're looking for. So what they did is they looked at this proposal and I heard it. I was listening to it. I'm listening to the people and I tried to warn those at the RTA, you need to come out and talk to Macomb County people. Don't poll them. Don't call them on a phone. Engage with them to kind of figure out what it is they're looking for and what really would add value or get them to think that, you know what, this is something important in my life and I could support that. They're comfortable with what SMART is providing, and uh, they're very happy with that. But they didn't see the connection and understanding. And so I get it, I see it, I think regional transit is important, but the plan that they put forward is what the people voted no against. So to be upset with the voters in Macomb County, you need to look at yourself if you're a candidate and you lost, why did I lose, why couldn't I get through the people, or if it's a proposal, those that were responsible for getting it out there, why is it that you weren't able to connect with them and get them to it, 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 You do have it. to be able to tell your story, but yeah. they told it obviously in other parts of the area that they, I mean, even in Oakland, it was almost a wash. But the last question I'll ask you, uh, the, I've talked to a number of people who worked on that initiative who said that two years from now, maybe they got to consider opting Macomb out of it. That wouldn't be healthy for Macomb, would it? No, I don't think so. Again, I, I, I think that's a cop-out. I, I, think, I think people in Macomb County, nobody in Macomb County said we don't want regional transit. We don't think it's important. I think the people well, in Macomb Well, it's a little, uh, a little difficult if you're reading the results. You know, some pe people draw their own conclusions about what, what the vote means. But, but Macomb County has always been a supporter. When it's the DIA, Macomb County's been supporter of the yep. zoo, the Cobo Authority, and, uh, you know, and beyond. I mean, so there isn't anything we haven't opted out. And again, when it comes to the smart system, we don't have an opt-out community. So Macomb County's always yep. been all in. I mean, even if you look back in time, and you start talking about the Metro Parks we've always been part of. So it's, it's not one of those where, okay, well, let's just leave them out since we can't get the votes and just see what we can do with these other areas. It's, it's making it so that it works for everyone, but you got to understand what it is they're looking for. Mark, it's always good to have you on the program. I Thank appreciate you, you being here this morning. Thank you. When we come back, we'll uh, get back to more of that uh, schism uh, that might exist at your Thanksgiving table.